Lesotho's Deputy Prime Minister Matibedi Mukotu has announced that he will lead a delegation to South Africa to meet with President Cyril Ramaphosa over the arrests of Lesotho Defence Force soldiers in the country, as well as the arrest of SANDF soldiers and border officials in Lesotho. Earlier this week, Lesotho police arrested two SANDF soldiers and two border officials for allegedly entering that country without passports to fill up with petrol. Last month, South Africa detained two Lesotho Defence Force soldiers who were allegedly pursuing alleged livestock thieves into South Africa. South Africa's border has since been closed as government attempts to stem the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. We've asked our correspondent in Lesotho, Rapilang Khadebe, to join us via Skype uh, to share the latest on this matter. Now, uh, Rapilang, a very good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. Another beautiful evening, Simpua. Hi. First of all, uh, take us back to why the SNDF officials were arrested. Um, it was actually a, a, a moment, I think, that caught all of us by surprise. Uh, it is a, relatively a common um, sighting that the officials mostly situated in Masero Bridge, uh, because of the proximity, they tend to buy lunch, small items, uh, mostly also to fill up petrol because the Lesotho side of petrol is relatively cheaper and probably the easiest. So they tend to cross. Um, so we believe it was probably one of those afternoon where they thought, let's fill up, let's get something, only to find that it was a wrong day for them. So it was them, they got arrested, um, and we went to court on Friday to try and understand the nature of what exactly it is they're being charged with. Well, in as much as this matter is now at diplomatic level, but uh, shouldn't this be construed as Lesotho authorities, uh, you know, doing their jobs in arresting people who are crossing the border without, uh, you know, without passport because it is in violation of that country's laws? Absolutely, it is um, when you consider the level, but. People were, had all sorts of ideas and said, yes, you cannot have military uh, dressed personnel crossing over into, to, into Lesotho. But if you look at the nature of the relationship really between Lesotho and South Africa, it is not as hostile. We have lots of Lesotho citizens simply crossing over into the nearby border towns um, in, in, in sometimes to come and make a call along the border lines of South Africa. But uh, you, you really rarely have it as such a hostile situation to an extent of being arrested. We understand it's times of COVID. We understand it's times of, but we really never thought. Usually they tend to have a casual conversation. Can I cross over, pick up the car from somebody who's pouring petrol? Um, it, it happens, I think, relatively often. So it, it, it sort of caught us by a surprise when he said they were actually charged. We are yet to really understand their defense because they were only charged when we went to court. They did not plead. They did not even have a uh, legal representative. So the, the actual merits of what actually transpired and how it went about that it goes to such an extreme. Uh, we saw South African High Commission trying to mediate in between. But once it gets into the court, we understand that it becomes matters of law. But it, it, it sort of, I suppose, shocked both sides of us. Would you perhaps not see this as a retaliation for Lesotho soldiers who were arrested while crossing into South Africa uh, while they were still pursuing alleged livestock thieves? Quite interesting narrative that one cannot ignore, really, because we started seeing visuals, footage of um, what looked like two Lesotho Defense Force uh, being detained uh, in, in a very harsh kind of manner, uh, being arrested. We understand that there is a case going on in Matatiel Court that is coming up shortly. And if you look at the nature of charges that have been uh, displayed or that have been said, they, they looked slightly overboard. So also it is another scenario. We know there was a little bit of dissatisfaction as to whether there should be mediation as to whether South Africa and Lesotho needs to amicably try to come to a solution, but it went as far as to the court. So when this happened, 
there was those doubts as to whether is it because now it's South African officials that have been arrested now that we tend to see the noise? What happened when the Lesotho citizens went into South Africa? Was it something that could be ignored as easily as that? I think I would also want to refer you that there was a case in the northern districts between the borderline of Fixburg towards Forestburg, whereby there was actually a case that said South African officials came into Lesotho uh, and actually took some cattle that they said they they were being they said they were harassed and stuff. We understand that case is still going on, but some were saying th that cases there was nothing serious that there was no noise done about it. Why is it this time when it's South Africans that have crossed into it becomes a bit of a case? So it's a very delicate balancing act. But we know many times we have. South Africans coming into Lesotho, actually being assisted by the Lesotho, but probably because they followed the proper channels, uh, that there is that kind of situation. So how, how this will come out, I think the bottom line is, if you look at Lesotho and South Africa, the, the borders really are official borders existing, but the country is so porous to an extent that even the casual relationship between the two people, it, it's so casual that... Um, if you were to follow each and every case, uh, you would have to arrest almost everyone living in those border towns. Is this not action likely to strain the relations between both countries? Absolutely, it will. It will. Because um, if, if, if South Africa decides to see this as an act of hostility, it will definitely frustrate probably the movements between the two borders. Or even if it's not an official case, the officials themselves might want to take it upon, them, upon their hands to try and sort them out, if one may say. And the question is, to, to if you look at the nature of the relationship, if Lesotho decides to do the same, the amount of business that South Africans do in Lesotho, the, the amount of business that Basotho do in South Africa, especially in these bordering towns, needs quite a delicate balance. I think it was just a few days when I had an interview with the International Relations Minister saying there is going to be, a, there has been discussions, actually it was supposed to be this very week, saying the relationship between those fixed back Lady Brand um, but at those border towns, there must be some sort of a special arrangement to avoid, I think, unnecessary extreme measures that would come to this. We understand there has to be law that is, has to be avoided, but there are places where there is not even a fence. Um, the children go to school on the other side of the border, they come back. Others, they go to hospitals on the Lesotho side. They get better services because of the proximity. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying I think there has to be a very delicate balance between the two ministers or the envoy that goes into this to try and look at a permanent solution. I don't think Lesotho will wake up a way. This relationship is going to last forever. And I think there needs to be a permanent solution diplomatic-wise. And I think the two countries need to have a conversation, very deep conversations. You speak of uh, uh, striking the balance between uh, solving this issue, but then uh, in terms of prosecuting, uh, uh, prosecuting these officers in both countries, uh, do you think that they should be treated differently from, from civilians, or should this matter be handled at diplomatic level, and hence the treatment should be, should be the same or different? I'm of a strong view, really, in pure that uh, the law must be upheld to its fullest. But at the same time, these are people-to-people -people relationships, and the motive, I think, should be established as to did they have ill intentions. We understand it's during COVID. We understand, but I think I want to quote what former Minister of, Foreign, of Home Affairs, Mr. Gigaba, said and said, he, he, he's a little perturbed as to why a South African needs to stamp the passport to go and buy milk. Why should a Musutu come to Lady Brand just to buy, um, to, to pay an account? Really, do they really need to stamp passports? I think he was trying to come from that particular side of saying there must be, yes, there's just too much elements of criminality that goes on, something that the legal officers needs to take and apply. But I think it shows this, this situation has actually shown what type of problems we might have 
if this is not dealt accordingly. If you check for myself the number of passports that I use in a year, and is, is it really worth the balance for somebody who crosses over almost every day and for other people who crosses over into South Africa almost on a daily basis, couldn't there be an amicable way of people People that you know, people that are trusted, that is why there was that suggestion of a trusted traveler, such that the relation can be normalized. Otherwise, you're going to turn ordinary citizens, ordinary citizens into criminals. All right, Rapalang Hadebe, thank you so much for your update. We appreciate your time.